were Prince Harry and Meghan Markle incredibly foolish to get rid of what I like to call the royal magic. When royals appear on the scene, people just kind of go nuts. Crowds form, people get so excited. They're seeing royalty. There's something very, very special about being in the presence of a member of a royal family, whether it is the Swedes, the Dutch, the Danish, any member of any royal family. There's just something about it that just captivates you. We've seen this recently with Prince William in New York City, where he was mobbed at scenes. There were massive, massive crowds there to greet him, to see him, to hopefully just even shake his hand. And then we also have King Charles now in France who is getting also an incredibly warm welcome and seeing crowds and crowds of people. And everybody just wants to shake their hands, be in the presence of royalty. And then recently we saw last week, Harry and Meghan in Dusseldorf where yes, crowds were there to be had, but it seemed like there were more press there than anything else. And that some of the shine that happens around royalty has rubbed off. So I'm just going to today talk a little bit about what I like to call the royal magic, the power of royalty, which is just so, so different than celebrity. And why I think Harry and Meghan were complete and other fools to think that they could bottle that and take that with them to California. Because as time goes on, the royal shine that Harry and Meghan had continues to wear thin with people. So we are going to go into this today. But if you guys haven't been to Royal News Network before, my name is Brittany. I provide compelling royal commentary about the latest news and has a little bit of drama going on behind the scenes. I also have a newsletter, a fashion channel, and membership. So if you guys are interested in any of that, feel free to sign up. I'm actually traveling in Europe right now and I actually have a couple of vlogs that are there for some of my members. And so if you're interested in that, some special behind the scenes pictures, other things that I haven't been able to share. And I usually put on my pictures kind of a big watermark, but for members, you get the pictures mostly without a less intrusive watermark watermark so you can see some of those great shots because I recently covered the Swedish Golden Jubilee for King Carl Gustav of Sweden and I also went to the Netherlands to and I also went to the Netherlands to observe Prince Dag Prince Day, Princess Day there, where the king and queen go over to the Royal Theater. The king reads a letter before Parliament. They go back. There's a carriage procession. There's a balcony appearance. And so I was able to do that, which was a lot of fun. I don't know if I'll do a whole video on it because it was just a very short time, but maybe I will if you guys are interested because it was really, really fun and interesting and different. And it's funny because this year I've seen three different balconies appearances in the UK, Sweden, and the Netherlands. And they're all different and they're all yet yeah, somewhat similar. And yeah, so it's just something fun to see. And I will say what was really exciting about the event in the Netherlands is that there were so many kids there so excited to see the king and queen. It was really, really adorable. But again, the, the setting is so very different than Buckingham Palace, which is huge and massive, and you got the Royal Mile. And in uh, these other places, especially in the Netherlands, it's just quite a small square that they're in. So all that's to say, I just really have enjoyed my travels and hopefully going to do a couple more behind the scenes things for some of the subscribers. Maybe you guys would be interested in a couple of the pictures and stuff. I took uh, different castles and palaces. I just had a lot of fun utilizing my camera and creating my camera skills. And later today, I'm going to see the coronation exhibit at Buckingham Palace. It'll be the first time I actually get to go into Buckingham Palace. So usually Buckingham Palace is only open in the summer. And every time I've gone, it either hasn't been open or, or I miss tickets or what have you. And so this is the first time I'm going in. I'm going to see the coronation exhibit, which I'm really, really excited about. And then, and then I get to end the night. It's super exciting, guys. <laughs> there are these little, like, igloo pod things near the Thames right next to the Tower of London. And apparently you had to reserve them like three months in advance. So when I knew I was coming on this trip, I reserved one because I was so excited. I had been wanting to do one of those igloo things right on the Thames. Of course, it's raining today, so it's not a great day. This will be dinner time. And so hopefully it'll be, it'll be a good dinner. It'll be probably a little bit pricey, but I just thought that would be so fun. <laughs> I just thought it would be really, really fun to do something that's rather special and unique and I had been wanting to do it ever since I saw those little pods. And then I also will do a live stream on Saturday. I'll have to figure out the exact time I'm going to do it. And then I'll probably do maybe a members only live stream on Friday because I haven't been able to do those. I've just been so, so busy because between travel and different events and everything, there's just, you just tend to go, 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 go. So this is going to be a little bit, little bit less excitement. 
I'll get to go to actually the Windsor Castle tomorrow because they opened up a tower and I really wanted to tour it. So I thought that would be really cool. So I will be going there and doing that. So, so many fun things going on today, guys. But let's talk about something very, very special. And that's the magic of royalty. There's something about royals that just, people are just like, oh, you got to meet a royal. Because let's be honest, anybody can meet a celebrity to a certain extent. You go to Hollywood, you can kind of see them a dime a dozen. I actually was in Hollywood one time, actually had flown into one of the airports around there. And as we were leaving the airport, this, this car marked X-17 drove up really quickly, took a couple of pictures of this guy, got back in and left. And it turns out it was Nick Lachey. And I don't really have any pictures of that I, although I think I ended up in some of those pictures actually, cause I'd broken my foot. So I was like walking kind of slowly. So I think I ended up in a couple of those pictures, but it was just something that it's like, hey, you can see a celebrity in California, you can go to a movie premiere or those sorts of things, and they're there and they interact with people. But royals are just something different because oftentimes there's not a large set schedule ahead of time. Usually, especially for Catherine and William due to security reasons and other things, they only announce a visit the day before it happens. And so you have to be like, oh, you have to be on top of it. You have to get out there. You have to rush. You have to be there early and people wait. And there's just something about it that's just so so exciting I think compared to just your mundane average everyday celebrity although I will say when celebrity culture I feel like was a bit bigger in the early 2000s I was in Rome and it was Julia Roberts George Clooney and Brad Pitt were apparently all in a restaurant so we were all out there waiting for them to come out of this restaurant in Rome because they're filming Ocean's 12. We didn't get to see them I'm not even still sure if they were actually there or not but I feel like royals, again, they're just a step above celebrity because they are very cautious in how they interact with people compared to what celebrities do now because we have social media and everything. Celebrities just blab all over the place and people just tend to get sort of sick of them. They see through the veneer and go, oh, you know what? I kind of liked them before, but now I don't so much. And so let's talk a little bit about a couple of events I've been to recently. Of course, one earlier this year was the coronation and there were so many people there. Everybody's so, so excited to see this event, see the new king and queen, Catherine and William, the children and everything. And there was just so, so much excitement. And I'm sure there were probably a million people maybe on the Royal Mile and I'm not entirely sure if that's accurate, but it felt like it just was so claustrophobic. So many people, I had to just run to get up there to the front of the palace. And I managed to get there and I managed to get a couple of really, really cool pictures, but just the excitement and the atmosphere, people waving flags and everything. There was just such, such excitement around the possibility of seeing the Royals at this event. We also have Catherine and William at the Dog and Duck. I was there, I got a selfie with Catherine and there was just, just massive crowds of people on both sides, everybody wanting to get that little, little bit of royal sparkle in their lives. And then recently, obviously, I was in Sweden for the King's Golden Jubilee. And it was a little bit different in Sweden because there were a decent amount of people at the changing of the guards, but not absolutely as crazy and insane as it was in the UK. But on the day of the concert, there were thousands and thousands of people. It felt like everybody in Stockholm came out to watch the King's procession and then the concert following. And so there were just people everywhere it seemed like. And I was a little bit sheltered from it because I was a member of the press. And so we were actually right next to the rails and everybody was on the far side. So we just didn't get to see everyone, but people were there cause they're all there for the excitement, the concert, seeing the King and Queen. They're in a carriage being pulled by horses because you can say, yes, yeah, celebrities arrive in Bentleys and Maseratis and, and, and Range Rovers and everything. But a couple in a golden, royal carriage being driven by a series of majestic horses. You can only get that in one place and that's royalty guys. That is royalty. And so there's just something so exciting about it. And although royals are, are normal people, they're, they're just fun too because they're different and they're interesting and they are not there to necessarily represent or sell themselves the way celebrities are. They're there to sell their country. They're there to represent their country. They're there to represent the history, the heritage, the culture, everything that makes up, let's say Sweden, the United Kingdom, Belgium, Spain, they're there to represent this continuity to the past. 
And then I was also obviously in uh, Prince's Day in the Netherlands. And it was it's very different because the square around the palace, Norendeen Palace, is, is very tiny. It's a very it's a very tiny space. And us in the media, we were in front of the gates that can open in the in the front, in the center. And then there were people around to the sides and stuff. And we saw the carriages come in and go out with the royals and everybody was so excited. And I got a couple of good pictures, but I will say getting pictures of people moving, of carriages, people in carriages with the glass and everything, not, not easy, not easy. I'm still working on that. But it was just so exciting to see everyone. We had Princess Alexia. It was her first time attending this event. Her sister had just attended for the first time last year because she has just turned 18. Her sister had just turned 18. And so they're, they're there growing up. And so we have this new generation of royals coming to the forefront. And then we were all sitting there waiting and it was, everything was good. And then all of a sudden it was like, okay, we're opening the floodgates. And all the people who were kept away by barricades so that the horses and carriages and the marching bands and everything could go around were like, come in. And it was just like pandemonium rushing to the front of the gates. And in one instance too, it was like all children. They were so excited to see the king and queen. I missed the first rush. I got a bit of the second one because it was like just all little kids. And I was just like so surprised because I guess when you're in the UK and you're there in the Royal Mile and there's just people everywhere it's it's hard to describe how how huge and massive it is and what it's like to be in that crowd because they, they pull people in from the back from the royal mile which is so you know like a mile or whatever and so you have to like zig and zag in between people to try to get as close to the front as you can and it's challenging it is challenging i managed to do it but it is hard so all these kids rush to the front and they're so excited and then the royal family comes out and they're waving to the crowd and everybody goes wild and a lot of people are in orange because it's the kingdom of orange historically and so orange is it's like the netherlands colors they always attend like sporting events and everything just just decked out in orange it's really really awesome i remember actually going through the airport after a trip and it was in Greece uh, we were coming back from Greece it was like an 04 and the Euro Cup or something was going on and so everybody in the airport was in orange <laughs> everyone I was like oh my gosh what is with the orange but yeah it's because they are the kingdom of orange and so they were there they were able to give their waves and they went back inside it was apparently a very very short appearance compared to most normal years Maxima went in first so I wonder if maybe she really wasn't feeling all that well or something and so but it was just still so exciting and even here in the UK I'm wondering well if Cara Catherine and William gonna do something I'm gonna show up anytime you you see royals there's just something magical about it and I think this extends even to the buildings as well so when I went to Munich earlier this month I toured one of the, the Munich residents the historic royal palace of the Bavarian royals and it's beautiful it's unique it's interesting there's like a shell room with like this whole huge shell display and stuff put together and I'm like this is so weird and these just gorgeous rooms but at the same time as you walk through it just felt empty. It just felt like a building without, without a soul in a way, if that makes sense, because there's nobody living there anymore. There's nobody working there. It's just there basically to show off the rooms of the former kings and queens. And so there's just not as much of an excitement to see it. Now, there, there's some places where that's not the same. Versailles obviously is a notable exception, but I think a lot of that has to do with its former residents being King Louis XIV and Marie Antoinette. Without the connection, I think, to Louis XIV and Marie Antoinette, I don't think the, the love of Versailles would perhaps be quite as a parent, the French still use the palace a lot. We just saw it at King Charles's state dinner in France. They still use it a lot to host state dinners and stuff. So it still has sort of a working function. They've done fashion events there, those sorts of things. So it, it just has a little bit more of a hub than some of these other royal palaces do. But when they're, they're empty and, and there's just nobody there and nobody has been there, really lived there for over a hundred years, it just doesn't feel quite as exciting because I'm really excited to go to Buckingham Palace in part because the royals live there. They work there. People work there. You can walk by this hall and go, 
wonder if Catherine and William have been in this haul. I wonder if they saw that. I wonder if they thought that was funny that, you know, this weird picture of somebody in the corner. Like you just wonder those things because it's actually a working palace. The Royals are there, they're living, they're working, they're engaging and all these sorts of things. And when I was in Stockholm and waiting for the to DM, even though I couldn't see the Royals, wasn't high enough as a Royal reporter yet to be allowed to see the Royals <laughs> for their entrance because they, they limited that. But just being there, knowing that the service was going on and knowing that, you know, people, the Royals still lived there. They still worked there and everything. There's a certain magic to that. And I don't think Royal magic is necessarily something you can bottle and just place anywhere you want to, because that's what Harry and Meghan thought. And I think especially Meghan, when she walked into the Royal family, she was surrounded by that Royal magic. So her as a no name middling actress, she just didn't have much of a footprint, but she walks into a palace. She now has this Royal title. All of a sudden she's enveloped in this magic of royalty and the magic of royalty can, can, shine things up that maybe are a little dusty or dirty in the corner. What I mean by that is that there's just a certain shine. So things maybe in your past or things that weren't so great. Like once you become royal and you really adopt that lifestyle, some of those things that were maybe less flattering that you've done are just kind of brushed aside because, hey, now you're royalty. You get to do this really, really cool thing. And you got to remember too, anybody can be a celebrity. I feel like that's especially true anymore with something like YouTube and stuff. I've gotten recognized in places and it's so exciting when that happens and it's a little bit odd because it's like, wow, people know me. Somebody recognized me actually at the, um, the, the Swedish Trooping the Color. And so it was just really, really cool and I have gotten recognized on the subway in London which was really cute because this lady she was like just sitting there and she had this little smile on she's like are you on YouTube and I'm like yeah and she goes I recognize your voice <laughs> I saw a couple other people. We were all getting coronation um, newspapers and stuff. And so there's there's an aspect now, especially with the advent of social media and stuff, is that you can be a celebrity. There's actually a girl I follow on Instagram and she happened to live near a place I was living at the time. And I actually happened to see her in the store. And I think somebody asked her for a selfie and she gave it because she has like a million Instagram followers or something. And I'm like, wow. I was like, I almost went up to her and then I didn't because it's like, I was like, I'm like, I'm just a peripheral watcher. I'm not that invested. And so it just felt a little weird, but I'm like, wow, that that's her. Because of social media and the influencer culture and everything, anybody really can be a celebrity in their own little sphere. But to be royalty, you either have to be born it or you have to marry into it. And both of those things are exceptionally hard to achieve because there's, yes, some bachelors and royals and yes, royals are marrying commoners and stuff like that. But there's odds are like 20 billion to one or something like that because there's just so few people with a royal title. Yes, certain people have, more people have an aristocratic title or something like that, but true, a, a true prince and princess title, that's a very, very small subsect of people. So when you actually meet somebody who can say, yes, I am the princess of Wales, I am the princess of Orange, I am the princess of Sweden, that's just something that's so incredibly different, especially because as time goes on, once, yes, you may have the title of prince or princess, but your children probably won't. And so there's just a, just a small, tiny group of people who can claim to be a prince or princess. Whereas basically any person can be a celebrity. You can be a, a, a Instagram celebrity, a reality TV show celebrity, a game show celebrity. Like there's just, or even a meltdown person, a person who has a meltdown on an airplane, all of a sudden you're like the most famous person in the world for like five days. All those things can happen, but royalty is something unique. And so Megan's idea of, well, I'm royal now. And so because of this royal status, her flaws and her inability, her lack of talent as an actress, all of a sudden that didn't really matter anymore. She didn't have that. She had this royalty to pull from rather than having to rely on herself and her talent. But Meghan Markle, I think, made the ultimate mistake of thinking that people were invested in her because of her, uh, because of her individually as Meghan. And yes, there are those people, but 
they only cared because she had the title of the Duchess of Sussex. The crowds didn't show up because of Meghan Markle in Australia and New Zealand, like she thought. They showed up because she was the Duchess of Sussex. That made all the difference. And so when Harry and Meghan thought, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to run over to the United States and we're just going to take this royalty thing with us and nobody will care. Nobody will care. We'll just do our same thing. It'll be awesome. It'll be great. But it hasn't really worked out that way. In fact, even people who invested in the couple as producers and podcasters and everything admitted that it was a bad investment. They weren't the people to engage in. And that's because I think that they were seduced by the royal titles that they had. And then once that royal veneer started to tarnish away and the real Harry and Meghan were there underneath, that their talentlessness, lack of creativity, lack of work ethic, all those things came together they're like oh I guess we were suckered because we thought the royalty thing was to a certain extent real but it just wasn't it just wasn't the magic of royalty exists when you are royal once you leave that the spell is broken and you can't really re recreate it in the same way because people see you differently now because as royals you're working for the state essentially you are a representative of your country you're a diplomat you are somebody who goes to events but you're representing something broader you're not in there necessarily to promote yourself yes that's part of it that's always part of it but you're not there to promote necessarily you as the, the individual person you're there to promote your country your cause etc but when Harry and Meghan left and became just basic celebrities but yet trying to be royalty it didn't quite work because now everything they do is self-indulgent self-promoting and self-gratifying so everything they have to do has to make money for them because that's the world they're living in now so whereas Catherine and William do things and they don't make a dime from it because they had the Duchy of Cornwall they had the the sovereign grant different things to help encapsulate them as a couple in their finances Harry and Meghan now are entirely different because everything they have to do has to make them money and so the veneer of royalty, the thing that makes us attach to them, is just gone. And as the spell breaks, Harry and Meghan, I think, find themselves continually floundering because they're weirdly trying to recreate royalty in the Invictus Games, in, in their car chase in Manhattan. All these sorts of things are constantly trying to recreate this magic. But unfortunately, the magic only exists when you have a palace as your address. Once you leave that palace, once you leave that protection of those royal places, all of a sudden you've gone from the Cinderella motif back into the working girl. There's just no way to combat it. And so I think Harry and Meghan were fools to let go of royalty and move away and think that they could still be royals without being royalty anymore. So that is just so interesting to see. And I love royals. And I think there is definitely a magic to royalty. So guys, let me know what you think your moment of royal magic is. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.